Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. We are back again. We did try to do this video last night and we were just having way too many technical difficulties. We think we've got everything handled. Please pray for us. Okay, so technology aside, I've got a really cool quilt I want to show you and I want to show you the quilting that I'm going to do on this quilt. So this is the pattern. My friend Marty purchased the pattern. We're not really sure where she purchased it because she's one of those that buys something and then doesn't do it right away. Love you, Marty. Um, so this is one that she finished and it's gonna go in her Florida house, which is absolutely perfect for this beautiful sea turtle. And the pattern is by 4th and 6th Designs. Now, here's the thing. I don't think they're in business anymore. Um, they were two sisters, they had really cool um, designs, and the neat thing about their designs was the way that they appliqued the designs. They do have, all, however, some videos on their YouTube channel, so I can't remember, it's fifth, fourth and sixth, um, fourth and six designs on like with the numeral four and six or if it's fourth and six designs but you can find how they do their applique technique which was a very very cool technique I liked it and the videos are really really well done but they haven't published anything in about two years so I don't think that they're doing this business anymore maybe you can find the pattern somewhere else though and I think Marty bought it as a kit they were all island batiks so she asked me to quilt it. I was thrilled. I love quilting quilts like this because of how many fun stitches I get to do. So that's what I'm going to take you through today. Probably we're going to make this a two-part video because there's so many different things I want to show you. Um, so it should be pretty fun. Before we do that, let me show you the tools I'm going to use as usual. So I'm going to use shiny polyester threads on the top. So these are from Floriani, which really is more for embroidery, but they're absolutely fabulous for quilting as long as you put a polyester in the bobbin. So the polyester that I'm putting in the bobbin is the Super Bobs from Superior. This is with their bottom line thread. Now the Super Bobs are pre-wound with a cardboard um, casing that you dispose of afterwards. And in this machine, they are fabulous. They work spectacularly. They might not work in every machine, so you've got to check to see if they do. If they don't, you can just purchase the regular bottom line thread and put it on your regular bobbin. So with this very fine weight, 60 weight in the bobbin, and this 40 weight in the top, my tension is supreme. It just is really shiny. So I've got the Floriani. I've got some Magnifico from Superior. This one, I've got a couple of really big, huge spools of this too, because I mean, do you not love that color? And then I also have a Robinson Anton that's a rayon. Back before they started making all these fabulous shiny polyesters, you used to have to always use rayon. Well, I still have it, it works great, so that's what we're gonna use. I'm gonna use a top stitch needle in a size 90. I like the size 90 because it just seems to work with all of my different threads. I'm going to use my Sort Quick. So this is for keeping my hands a little bit sticky, which works really, really great. Um, if you just notice that bump, it's my very large cat bumping Athena's legs. So it's not a technical difficulty, it's a kitty cat problem we're having. So, okay, RC, you can go now. All right, then we're also gonna use the pins. So these are my, this is my pin tray. This is where I put all of my safety pins. I'm able to put them all, keep them all organized. We are planning on doing some sort of a kit for this. So if you're interested in getting this kit, Fireside Quilts is gonna to put together a kit with the foam and the pins and everything. So you'll have everything together. And then later on, I'm gonna show you this new tool for Martelli. Now Martelli does a lot of cutting tools and tables. They've got that um, one rotary cutter that's used for while you're sitting down for people that can't be standing up so much. And they've come out with some quilting tools. And I gotta tell you, I wasn't prepared for this, but I kinda liked them. So I'm gonna show you how these work too. And there's a couple, there's this much bigger one, and then there's these little ones that are for the palm. Liked it very, very much. So before we start, I'm gonna take the camera from Athena and show you some close-ups of the quilt. All right, so not a technical difficulty. Don't wanna show you too much of the studio. All right, so this is the quilt as Marty made it. She did a beautiful job. And what 
I noticed right away was the quilt top was now flat, not flat. So raise your hand if you've ever made a quilt that was not a flat top. Yep, everybody's hand went up because it happens. Sometimes it happens maybe before you know better about different piecing techniques, but it definitely happens if you're doing an applique, machine applique technique like this. So as I mentioned earlier, their technique is to do a lot of the stitching right on the edge of the fabric, and it works great. It looks fabulous, but the top is not flat. Now, if you look over here at this corner, this is the corner that I have completely quilted all the way up here to the Mr. Turtle's um, foot, all the way down here. I mean, flat. That just is super flat the way it's supposed to be. It's got some great texture to it, and I did some really fun quilting designs. I wanted to do that much quilting anyway, but I had to. For instance, look at this piece up here. It is so bubbly. There's so much fabric there. And then that brings me to the turtle. If Now, a lot of people might look at a design like this and think, well, I don't want to quilt on top of that piece because I want that piece to bump up and be dimensional. You have to. You cannot not quilt a large section like that. It's called equal density of quilting. The quilting needs to be of equal density. If not, you will get some really obnoxious bumps, especially when you wash the quilt. And so some of you might be thinking, well, I would never wash this quilt. It would be a wall hanging. You have to wash a quilt. At some point in time, they have to be washed. So now I'm going to give this back to Athena. All right. So to start with for this quilt, the basting I did just like I normally do. So if you want to reference that, the Great Basics is the quilt that we just finished a little while ago. And it has my basting technique where I spray size the backing. I use the 505 adhesive to hold it down. Then I put the quilt down and then I use the safety pins on top of that. The first quilting I do is this very edge. So I just did a line of stitching along the edge. Normally, I will then go and go around the quilt, maybe on the border. But with this design, it just didn't seem right to me to do a long straight line throughout it. I didn't want to do that. And on this design, there wasn't really anything I could stabilize. Like if this were a 12 inch sampler block, I would have stabilized on the sashings, then get into all of the blocks and do whatever quilting I wanted to do on that. With this, I couldn't do this. There is no straight lines. So I started with the stabilizing on these kind of long blue sections. They're kind of all over the bottom of it and one near the top. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So coming in here, this is the last one that needs to be done. And I'm going to take out my safety pins, put them over here to get into my box. And you can see how puffy it is. Oh, come on, safety pin. There it is. You can see how puffy it is. So what I want to do is a line of stitching just on the inside edge of this little blue, I don't know, it looks like a little river, but I don't think that's what it actually is. I already have the sort quick on my hand. I've got my thread in my bobbin and I'm ready to quilt. So I always start with a few really tiny stitches. I work with my needle in the down position and I'm just gonna go kind of right along this edge. Now, one thing that's cool about this applique technique that they do is they do not use a fusible adhesive like steam a seam or Wonder Under or Heat and Bond or Hot Fix of any of those. They actually put it down with freezer paper and secure it with Roxanne's glue. Well, that makes the quilt very nice and flexible, but I'm noticing that every once in a while when I get near the edges, and you might be able to hear it, it's kind of popping. And I think that is the drops of Roxanne's glue. It doesn't seem to be hurting anything, but that's just one little issue. So I've sewed that little, that little stabilizing strip. So now I'm able to get in and quilt these sections. So before I quilt a section, I wanna draw a section. So now I pull out my pen and paper. Oops, it's got stuck on something. And this is what I'm gonna draw. So the first thing I wanna work for you is the border. So I'm gonna work on one of these borders. And with this quilt, I am not doing 
just standard border quilting. I really want the border to become part of the quilt. So I'm using the similar designs that I'm using in the quilt also in the border. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna start with an open feather. So my open feathers, I start at the bottom, sweep around and come back in. Then I go to the next one and I call it an open feather because these two lines are not touching. Then I go to the left again, I go back and forth, but I want this to be a little different. So occasionally I'm gonna put a little feather in the middle and then I'm gonna sweep another feather all the way around it to give it kind of a little bit more of a uniqueness. So like right here, I'll put another one, come all the way around. Ooh, I kind of went a little bit to the right, but that's okay. I'll do more feathers. So that's kind of what the feathers are gonna look like. But then I'm gonna to add to that some circles, some pebbles, where I'm gonna go around and around and around. I don't wanna to do too many because I wanna quilt it for you. Then I'm gonna go back to doing a feather. And then I've got one more design that I wanna do. And this is a comb. It's, got, it's reminiscent of one of the designs on these batiks. But the idea, I sure I'm glad I can quilt better than I draw, is that it goes back and forth, creating these points kind of with a center. Now, when you're filling in a space, you do have to do a little bit more. And so if I go around the corner, I don't know if I'm going to use this to go around the corner, but it would be like that. So kind of back and forth, and then I would go back to my feathers. So that's the intention. Those are the designs that I'm gonna use on the border. So now let me find where on the border we're gonna work. All right, so we gotta come, oh, it's right here, how convenient. Okay, first things first, I've gotta change my thread. I have this blue thread in, and I wanna put in one of the green threads. While you're doing that, we yes. had a question. Oh, I love questions. What is the um, lickety grip that it's called sort quick sort so quick. you can purchase that at firesidequilts.com um laura was able to find a vendor it's really very very nice um it's so similar to what lickety grip was but it's got that large section of it so your whole hand goes on it and it goes on really really fast so whereas i was crying when lickety grip went out and whoever decided to do that not cool but I have found a replacement, so I'm okay. I will survive. So you can find that on Fireside Quilts along with lots of the other things that I use. All right, so we are now, nope, we are not threaded. This is not my, my icon, which threads like, you know, a little magical. All right, so now we're in position and I'm gonna do this corner and I'm gonna take and do the feathers around the corner. So kind of watch as I do that. Doing feathers around a corner is something you gotta get used to. Not everybody, I don't know how to describe it. It's like driving if you ask me. You get more and more comfortable with it as you go. So I'm gonna come out a little bit, but then I've gotta cut this tail of the thread. Now I had cut my thread so I know that I just have a little bobbin in there. And then I'm gonna come to a bigger one so I'm creating that kind of funky feather. I also, let me get to an end, I want you to notice that I'm staying a quarter of an inch away from the edge because that's where my binding is gonna be and I don't want my binding to be on my quilt. So now to the left, I'm gonna make a smaller feather. To the right, a bigger feather. To the left, another smaller feather, but kind of sweeping around the side of him. And then to the right, I'm gonna do two feathers. They're gonna fill in this corner. And then I'm gonna do yet another one to the right. So I have just rounded my corner. Thought that looked pretty cool. All right, so now I'm gonna switch up to another design because this is the fabric that has, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got this really cool, yeah, there it is, that kind of zoom, zoom, and that's the idea where I got it from. So that's telling me, time to switch your design, Nancy. So I'm going to do the combs, 
I do three to a side, sometimes four. There's no magic. You can do five if it makes you feel good. And then go to the other side. Three more here. Then go back to the other side. So this is not hard. I think the hardest part about doing these combs is keeping your tempo the same. Keeping when you're going forward and back that you're moving at the same tempo because we all know that that is your stitch length. Your machine does not tell you the stitch length. It's the tempo that you're moving with your hands and your machine. So now I'm gonna go back to the feathers Go a little bit faster with my feathers because I'm very, very comfortable with them. I have not always been very comfortable with them. It comes with time. I've been making feathers for a long time. A couple more. I'm going to do a little one here. Come and sweep around the side of him. And do you see that? Am I right? I really do quilt them better than I draw them, don't I? I think I do. All right. And now it's time for me to change the design again. When I get to this light yellow one is when I wanna go to the pebbles. So now I'm here, I'm gonna do one more little feather, I think, yeah. All right, I'm gonna turn the quilt a little bit. Do one more little feather, and then I'm gonna do, let's see if we can get a little bit more light down there. How's that, a little better? Okay. So I'm gonna do one more little feather in the middle, and now I'm gonna start doing pebbles. So the idea of pebbles is to go around the edge of the pebble. Sometimes you go twice, sometimes you go once, and oh my goodness, sometimes you might go three times. You just kind of never know. You're just trying to fill the space so that it looks like pebbles. And if you think about where Mr. T, the sea turtle, would be swimming, he would be, you know, we, we actually saw a sea turtle off the coast in Hawaii that's when my obsessions with sea turtles began. It was so, so cool. So like here, I'm gonna do a little pebble, then a big pebble, sometimes going around different, time, different amount of times to give it different texture. It's that in between the pebbles that really gives it that really cool look. So I'm gonna go all the way over here, just kind of weave my way through the pebbles to get one more pebble here. And then I'm going to go back to feathers. So changing the design is going to make this quilt have a very unique look to it. It won't be anything that, I don't know, it's just not typical. And I think that's very cool when it's an art quilt like this. All right, so I'm going to end my feathers there. I really don't have too much more to go on the border and then I'll be done with it. So I'm pretty excited about that. We're gonna now go to another design and it's gonna be in, do we wanna do the water now? No, I wanna do this over here. I think we're gonna change the water for next time. So we're gonna do the same type of design that we just did. Oops, I gotta flip up my quilt from the side. There, all right. Right here, in this piece. So this is the piece that has that really cool design. I'm not going to follow the designs just because following a design is not easy, but do you see how puffy it is? It's super puffy because I've already quilted down the water and the top part over here. I've not quilted down the water here, but I did do the turtle. We'll save the water for next time. But right here is where I'm going to start and I'm going to do those combs again. Oops. And it's a little bit different when you're filling a space as opposed to filling just the border. So come here, then go in the other direction. I think you should be able to see this pretty good. Good. Now I'm gonna go to some small ones. That'll then lead me into some bigger ones. So this time I'm going four, and I might continue that, and I might not. I just might, you know, go crazy and just do three this time. There, now I'm going back. Now I wanna show you these paddles now, cause we're almost to the end. These are the Martelli paddles. 
And I didn't expect to like them, you guys. I really, really didn't. So they're only about the size of my palm. And they've got this soft kind of material. It is not sticky, but it totally holds onto the quilt. And the idea is you just set them on either side. So instead of you trying to grip the quilt, like, and even putting the sticky on can sometimes get you gripping the quilt. Instead, you're just holding them in place. And when it's time to move, they're small enough that you can just move them where you want them to be. Now the other ones were a little bit bigger. Let me show you those real quick. I wasn't as enthralled with these. I guess if I were maybe doing some bigger designs, this could be handy, but they've got these little balls on them. I think I wish they weren't there, but it's the same idea. And it is really helping me move this very easily, I gotta tell you. Now this, these Martelli products are currently not on Fireside Quilts, but if you are interested in them, Laura does have a source that she can get these. So just send her an email right through the website, or if you want to send it to me at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com, I will be sure that Laura gets in contact with you and that she gets these paddles to you. I must tell you, though, that just these little ones have a retail of about $35. So for me, if I were buying them, because the liquidy grip is like five bucks or something like that, um, that might be a little bit much, unless you're really into them. So it'd be great if, you know, if you go to a show, if we're ever able to have quilt shows again, if you go to a show, then maybe Martelli can let you practice with them, because this is one of the items that they sell at the show. So we covered the border, and we covered doing the combs in one part of the quilt. Next time, we will talk a little bit more about working on the turtle, and we'll also work on the water and some other designs going on in the Mr. T quilt. If you have any questions, again, my email is quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. I hope you like this video. Please give us a thumbs up. We really like that. Share the video with your friends. I love that, too. Um, and thank you all very much. We did over... We, we have more than 40,000 subscribers now on our YouTube channel, and that's very exciting. I thought if we ever had 2,000, that would be really cool. So 40,000, seriously, that's just outrageous. Um, I also have books and on my pin cushion and Gina's Fun Seam Ripper on our website, which is onpoint-tv. Dot com. You can go there to find um, any of the product that we're selling. Have a great day.